particularly the education program that we're doing is um, very uh, personally meaningful. Higher education transformed my life and, and, and that of my family as well. Mahmoud uh, originally is an American citizen like me, but originally from um, uh, Togo and Guinea, and I'm from the Caribbean. So we have this heritage and um, we, we're, we're very honored to be able to work on such a meaningful program um, with the Cote d'Ivoire. Um, so what I'd like to do is tell you a little bit about who MCC is, uh, what our program is in Cote d'Ivoire, and share with you what I think are some opportunities um, for collaboration uh, or partnership with a, a lot of you in this space. Um, let's start, uh, next slide please. With a little overview of MCC. So we're actually a fairly young agency of the US government. We were created in 2004 by the US Congress. And the, uh, the idea was to try to take the best practices from 60 or so odd years of foreign development assistance and the best practices of US public policy and apply them to a new agency to test and do things a little bit uh, differently. So what's different about MCC? Um, I would say there's four things that uh, make us very different than other parts of the United States government that also do development assistance. You might have heard recently there was the BUILD Act that was just passed by Congress and created a new development finance um, instrument for the U.S. government. Um, but what, what characterizes MCC as different is these four things, our mission and structure, our competitive um, process for selecting our partners, um, our belief in what we call country ownership, or that the role that a country should have in defining its priorities and leading implementation of its own programs and development, and then what we call focus on results. So in terms of our mission, we have a very focused and singular mission, which is poverty reduction through economic growth. So what that means is that we judge ourselves and we think about our programming in terms of will this project, will this investment have an impact on income? income of households and income of enterprises. And that's the bottom line for us. Um, secondly, um, as our name implies, we're structured like a corporation. So like a private company, we have a CEO, we have vice presidents that are a senior management team, and we're governed by a public-private board that includes members of the uh, cabinet level members of the US interagency as well as private sector um, representatives on our board. And they make decisions about who we partner with, what kind of programming we do, um, et cetera. So, uh, in terms of competitive selection, this I think is a pretty innovative part of MCC's model. And the idea was, we believe that the public sector has an important role to play in um, enabling private sector-led growth. But that requires that the countries have sound policies that provide that fertile environment, enabling environment for private sector investment. So we created what we call our MCC policy scorecard. It rates and ranks countries that are um, in the path of development uh, relative to three areas, which are ruling justly, investing in people and economic openness. And so a country has to pass half of the indicators in that scorecard, plus control of corruption indicator and um, democracy or civil rights in order to even be eligible for MCC assistance. And on top of that, the country has to maintain that eligibility throughout our programming. So um, researchers from William and Mary have uh, done some research and they call it the MCC effect, where we've seen that um, our model, the grant funding that we bring to bear in particular um, programs is a big incentive for countries to continue to respect those um, principles and, and, and public policies that, that we believe matter for economic development. Um, thirdly, let me talk about country ownership. So what we mean by that is we're working with the best of the best, the best governed countries, so they should have um, the leadership in defining their priorities and actually implementing the investments. But it comes with maybe a little bit of a catch. We have a five-year clock, meaning that after five years are done, we cannot continue to disperse any uh, investment. There's no such thing as a no-cost extension, which I'm sure many of you have heard before, um, that other agencies uh, work on. So the, that clock really pushes us to uh, complete our grants, which tend to be around $350 million per grant. 
um, in a very timely fashion and really does produce results. Um, lastly, we have something we call focus on results. And what that means is that every single investment that we do and we look at needs to pass at least a 10% economic rate of return hurdle. So we look at it like a banker, and, but we're looking at a, at a public investment for public good. So we want to make sure that the, the benefits justify those costs. We're transparent in our programming. We um, put out all our monitoring information and we spend, I think, more than any other development agency in what we call rigorous impact evaluation. So using experimental and quasi-experimental um, methods to try to really isolate the attribution of what we're doing to impacts in income. So that's in uh, a little <laughs> introduction into the Millennium Challenge Corporation. Now let me tell you what we're doing um, here in Cote d'Ivoire. Next slide, please. So um, we're really in beginning stages in Cote d'Ivoire. We signed a new, what we call a, a compact because we see it as a partnership between the US government and the government of Cote d'Ivoire for a new, its first program um, last November. It's a $525 million grant that will be executed in five years. Um, and it focuses on two sectors, education and transportation. Um, and how did we choose those sectors? Um, essentially, we uh, use a methodology that was developed actually at my alma mater, uh, which is Harvard Kennedy School, and it's called a growth diagnostic. And what we try to do is try to use data, evidence in the economy to figure out what are the one or two things that if you focus on really resolving are going to have the biggest impact on private sector-led entrepreneurship and investments. And in Cote d'Ivoire, our economists, working with economists of Cote d'Ivoire, found that um, the, the country's over-reliance on a single commodity was a really a big source of instability, and that there was a need to diversify that economy. And what businesses said is that their primary constraint to doing that is finding skilled labor and people, and then being able to move goods uh, and services and people um, in a cost-effective, an efficient way um, in, in the country. So that's how we determine the two investment um, areas. And I should say that I want to highlight what that colorful uh, document that's up here next to the logo is, is actually Cote d'Ivoire's um, scorecard, policy scorecard. And I just want to highlight that this is really a country that is reforming. And uh, President Watra, when he um, took office, said he wanted to use that policy scorecard as a way of kind of guiding the reforms that the government wanted to undertake. And I think more than any country partner that we've seen, Cote d'Ivoire really um, went from not passing and not performing to, in the span of three or four years, becoming eligible for MCC assistance. And I think recently he even said his goal was, the, the president mentioned his goal was to pass 20 out of 20 of those indicators, which is um, quite, quite remarkable and, and bold in which uh, we applaud. So let me tell you a little bit more in detail about the investments. Next, next slide, please. So let's talk about the education project, which I think is of most interest to all of you. It's actually called the Skills for Employability uh, and Productivity Project. So um, we understood that there was this problem in the economy that the private sector is saying they can't find workers, but we needed to understand why, what are the root causes of that, and of those root causes, where did it make sense with our grant funding to invest? And what we found was two areas. One is secondary education, and the second is on technical vocational education, or what we call TVET. Um, and the program is structured um, to invest quite significantly in infrastructure, but because infrastructure, I think I've heard some participants talk about, um, particularly from the last panel, how important infrastructure is, but it's not enough. Infrastructure by itself uh, isn't going to change. So we actually also have some um, significant policy institutional reforms that accompany, that actually conditions to access to program funding and construction. Um, in the secondary uh, education space, we're investing in um, construction of up to 84 um, secondary schools in, the reg in two regions of Cote d'Ivoire. Um, we're also investing in a new um, data um, management system for the ministry so they can make 
better uh, decisions on the basis of evidence and data. Uh, we're investing in two uh, new teacher training campuses, um, as well as, for, and in, in technical vocational education, we're financing up to four um, TVET centers, one of which, one area that is pre-selected is actually in building and um, in public works. Um, so those are the infrastructure components and the conditions or the re policy reforms include things like creating an interministerial teacher training committee because what we're finding when you go out to rural communities, the absence, the shortage of, uh, shortage of teachers actually um, is a major problem for the financing and the sustainability and maintenance of those schools because schools, rather than using their funding, uh, for maintaining roofs and building uh, new classrooms. They're using it to um, find substitute teachers um, that many times are not even qualified to provide education uh, to, the, to the children. So doing teacher training, we're um, working with the government on a policy uh, related to gender to help girls have access to um, uh, secondary education in particular, um, amongst others. In the TVET space, I think what's interesting, what we found is there was sort of this supply um, demand imbalance and that there's actually quite a bit of initiatives in country to do technical vocational education, but the students are not finding employment and the, the private sector is just not, uh, there's evidence, strong evidence that there's high returns particularly to TVET uh, education here in Cote d'Ivoire and even in the United States, I think um, that's been a dialogue in, in the US. So what we're trying to do is pilot an actual new model for technical vocational education where at the center of that model is the private sector. So rather than um, the government will own the assets for these uh, centers and invest resources, but the management of those centers, the teachers will all be from the uh, private sector and private sector associations will have a, a, a large role in defining the content. And actually they obviously need to pr uh, partner with public sector institutions, or sorry, educational institutions that can help them with the pedagogy and, and providing the training. So um, as a condition for that program, we're actually asking the government to enact the legal and regulatory reforms that will enable those centers to, to start uh, functioning. So that's um, the Skills for Employability project. Um, next slide. I'll talk about the Abidjan Transport project, uh, which uh, we found that, as I said, um, uh, transport and movement of goods and people, in particularly in the city of Abidjan, where 20% of the population lives, where 90% of businesses are located, is very problematic. So we're investing in rehabilitating and redesigning um, uh, about 32 kilometers uh, of roads, and actually um, the government team is here. Um, one of our transport, the, tra the lead for the transportation project is here, so if you have questions, I'm gonna direct them uh, to him. Um, but uh, I think more important, or just as important as that infrastructure are the, the reforms underlying the, that um, programming. This includes reforming uh, financing of maintenance and the functioning of the road maintenance for, uh, fund board, and includes actually uh, as well um, uh, creating a master's level program um, in infrastructure management that I actually wanna hi highlight for you in the next slide. Next slide, please. So this is an opportunity that um, actually, uh, well, you'll probably see in the market in the next one or two months. But the idea with this um, is to have a um, competitively se select a partner university that will work with the Institut uh, National uh, the Polytechnique INPHB. Sorry, I'm still. Uh, learning lots of acronyms, and NSEA to create a new master's level program for, that incorporates engineering, environment, and social components uh, to infrastructure management. Um, so MCC will finance the, the equipment, will finance the development of the curriculum, uh, the partner will work with the two university institutions here to create a business plan. Um, and um, actually the government will commit to, to ensuring that up to 20 to 30 students from the government road agencies will actually participate in that uh, program. Um, and there's talk about defining how the private, private students might also um, join that investment. So I think that's a very pertinent um, investment that I thought 
um, some of the educational institutions here would be interested in. And we have a pamphlet or flyer that was actually in your bags, um, which outlines some of the upcoming procurements and opportunities. Uh, next slide. So there you have it, that's the Millennium Challenge Corporation and that's what we're doing here in uh, Cote d'Ivoire. We think this is um, a really important investment with a really important partner who is uh, who's, um, strongly committed to reform. Uh, you heard from the, pr uh, the President Watara yesterday as well as the Minister of Higher Education. They're making significant commitments uh, of, of resources, of their time to this sector, uh, and we are just one part of that uh, plan uh, to support them in, in executing. Um, and I think it's a very uh, transformative um, investment with, with lots of potential for innovation through the grant funding that uh, we're offering. So I hope that you would consider um, bidding, participating in some of the procurements that will be upcoming, but also even partnership. We have a partnership office in Washington, D.C. Um, that handles partnerships with the private sector, with university institutions. I think the, the, the challenges are uh, big, um, but I see, I feel inspired by this group, by your energy and your commitment, and I really invite you and welcome you to um, partner with us in the, these um, bold and transformational things that we're trying to do here in Cote d'Ivoire. So thank you, and if there's any questions. I don't know if I've heard all, but for what I've heard, for the essential on the education of young women, the MCC puts l'accent accent with the government Ivoirian on education au niveau secondaire et nous voulons attirer l'attention justement de l'importance également d'encourager de, euh, hein, les jeunes filles au niveau supérieur. C'est vrai que euh, nous avons créé des associations de femmes chercheurs au niveau de l'enseignement supérieur pour encourager les jeunes filles à s'orienter au niveau de, le, de la recherche, mais ça reste encore timide et on souhaiterait que ce programme puisse s'étendre au niveau supérieur. Et si le, bon, c'est vrai, vous tenez compte des priorités de l'État, mais nous avons fait le lobbying, mais apparemment ça reste toujours au niveau secondaire, il y, a, il y a beaucoup à faire au niveau supérieur et je pense que ça peut aider à encourager euh, plus le secondaire s'il y a plus de femmes qui s'orientent dans les domaines scientifiques au niveau supérieur. Euh, merci pour la, le commentaire. En réalité, euh, le programme, euh, l'aspect des genres, c'est au niveau euh, d'éducation euh, à large. Euh, euh, donc le gouvernement devrait mettre en place un euh, plan d'action, créer un nouvel département qui, qui euh, va regarder tous les aspects de, de la politique de genre dans le système d'éducation. Uh, mais aussi, dans, même dans le programme de Masters, on demande que les institutions uh, aient un plan uh, pour attirer les femmes uh, en particulier. Nous pensons que um, c'est très important et on a même uh, uh, investi dans un programme qu'on appelle um, Data Laboratives for Local Impact, DCLI, où on a formé des jeunes filles uh, dans le uh, Data Sciences. Donc, euh, on avait la, la ministre Ram Ramatali Li. Elle était un membre de le comité de d'administration, de euh, comme quand elle était la ministre, ministre de euh, enseignement supérieur. Et nous pensons que même si elle est maintenant la ministre de de, de femmes, euh, on aura l'opportunité de, de de travailler avec elle sur cette point très très euh, import, important et pertinent pour nous. Donc, merci. merci.